Hello dear friends, this is Ewell Humphreys. I'm glad to be here and share with you another word from the Bible. It's a good word. I think, well, just a five or ten minute message. I'd like to share it with you. And uh, as I do, I pray God will bless it to your heart and to your life as it goes out all over um, America and all around the world. Thank God. These little messages are going all over the world and ever stayed in America. Praise God. I want to say this to you. If you have any questions you'd like to ask regarding the Bible or maybe something that, uh, in, in your life, if you, you feel free to put it on, a, on your message to my YouTube and, I, and <clears throat> I'll try to answer that question as best I can as the Lord leads me. But anyway, let me speak to you right now on the fact that there are good things before you. Good things are ahead for you. If you believe in Jesus, you're going to have some good things. There will be some bad things. There will be some trials. And, but, but, but in it all, there will be the blessings of God upon your life. And you'll be glad that you've trusted Jesus and you're walking with the Lord. The Bible says over in uh, Joshua, the 17th chapter, You are a great people and you have great power. One lot shall not be yours only, but the mountain shall be yours. The mountain shall be yours. Not just a lot, not just one small lot, but the whole mountain. And I think this is a good word for God's people, that a mountain out there is for you. God isn't just going to give you a little. He's going to give you much. He's not going to give you a few blessings. He's going to give you many blessings. But you need to trust in the Lord. You need to trust in Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life. And when you do that, then your sins are forgiven. And your name is written in heaven. And you belong to God. And you'll no more be a part of this old wicked world. But you'll be a part of the kingdom of God. You'll be in the world, but you won't be of the world. You'll belong to God. And to the kingdom of God. And there are good things ahead for you when you do that. I want you to know that this is true because the Bible teaches it. Over in the book of 1 Peter, we read these words in the 5th chapter of 1 Peter, verse 10. But the God of all grace, who has, made, who has called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, oh, <clears throat> after that you have suffered a while, that he make you perfect, that he establish and strengthen and settle and bless you. Amen. So here the Lord is saying that may the God of all grace which, brought, which, uh, by, which by His eternal glory through Christ Jesus has saved you after you have suffered a while make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle and bless you. And so here He is saying that the God of all grace has called you. He's calling you to be His. If you're not a Savior, if you're not a Christian and you haven't ever accepted Him as your Lord, do it now by saying the brief prayer with me. Praying that God will forgive you and Jesus will come into your heart and into your life. Pray a prayer like this and say, Dear God, I believe in Jesus. I believe He died for me. I believe He rose again. I believe He's coming back. Come into my heart and help me live for you as the Lord of my life. Amen. Pray that prayer. And you can believe that you're called of God. And He's delivered you. And He's going to bless you. And you may have to suffer a some. But there's suffering anyway in this world. But now when you suffer, you've got a purpose in it. And there's a reason for it. And God is using it to make you what you ought to be. After you've suffered a while, He'll make you perfect. He will establish you and make you strong. He will strengthen you and give you hope. And He will settle you and give you patience and joy in the Lord. And may it be so with you. May you learn to apply the Word of God. May you learn to receive Jesus and learn to feast on Him. Learn to feast on Him. Amen. That's important. Over in the book of, uh, of, of Hebrews, in the, in the uh, fifth chapter of Hebrews, it says, uh, For when you have when you should have been uh, uh, teachers, you have need of being taught yourself. And when by the time of the first principles uh, of the oracles of God, and to become such as have uh, a need of milk, but not of strong meat. 
for everyone that uses milk is uh, uh, is unskilled in the word, the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongs to him that has overcome and has exercised himself to work walk with God and to discern that which pleases God. So you see, we need to learn that we must we must grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. And one way we grow is by feasting on the Word of God. And, and as we do so, we, we grow in grace. In other ways, is just to learn to exercise that which we read, apply it to our lives. When he says, uh, forgive someone, you must learn to forgive as best you can. When he says, love someone that you don't really like, <laughs> you've got to learn, praise God, to love that person. You've got to learn to trust the Lord even in times of darkness for He's your light and He's coming through. You've got to learn that when you fall, His hand is there to pick you up and keep you going. And this is the way we grow in grace. I went to the restaurant the other day and we sat, sat down and uh, I looked at the menu and oh boy, there's pictures of good food on that menu. And I looked at those pictures and looking and then the waiter came up and said, let me just let me explain to you what we have a special and he, he explained the, the good food that we had a special meal and a menu and I listened and finally I ordered something I ate it and enjoyed it and went back to my place of abode but now had I just looked at that menu and just listened to the waiter and then it folded it up and said I decide I'm not going to order anything and leave I, could, I would not have been satisfied just looking at the menu and listening to what it is is not like taking it into my body and enjoying it. Now you can listen to the sermon. You can listen to the Word of God. You can listen to preachers like the waiter trying to explain. But unless you take it into your life and begin to apply it in your life and your daily walk with God, then you're not going to enjoy it and you're not going to be strengthened by it. And so we need to recognize the need the need of calling upon the name of the Lord God. The need because it's there, it's real. And we need to call upon Him and let Him know that we love Him and we need Him and, and He's calling us to walk with Him. And that is a wonderful, wonderful thing to know and to do. I, uh, I want you to know that uh, when we uh, read in Matthew 5 and 9, we read a good word and I think it's a word that uh, we need to uh, we need to expect as being one that is of, uh, of, of what we need to know and what we need to see and, and hear. And that is that uh, blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart. And God wants to give you a new heart. He has given you a new heart. As a Christian, you have a new heart and a new spirit that God has given to you. And when you were saved, He gave you that new heart. And He gave you a new spirit and then he put his spirit within you. The Bible says in John 14 and 13, John, Jesus said, I go away, but I'm sending you another comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. And he will be with you, and he will never leave you nor forsake you. And he said, the world will not know him because they cannot see him. But you know him, for he shall abide in you. He shall be in you. And Jesus said, I'll not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Praise God. There are good things ahead for you, dear friend. There are blessings ahead for you as you believe in the Lord. Keep trusting Jesus. When you falter, look up and keep going. Keep trusting Jesus. When your prayers seem to be unanswered, don't give up. Keep trusting Jesus. When you look in the night and it's dark and you haven't found the light just yet, keep trusting Jesus. Keep trusting Him and He will bring you out. And you're going to have good times, good days, good experiences. Good things are ahead for you, Christian. Good things are ahead. And I believe you're going to enjoy them very, very soon. I praise God. Oh, out of my bondage of sorrow and night, Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come. Into thy gladness, freedom, and light. Jesus, I come to thee. Out of my sickness into thy health out of my old want into thy wealth out of my sin into thyself oh Jesus I come to thee I want you to go to him trust him today 
and let him know you love him. And all praise God. You will find good things ahead for you. God's going to bless you. And you're going to be able to sing. Oh, praise the God. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will one day dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God bless you. Remember, the Lord has not given you just one lot only, but He's given you the mountain. Praise God. Amen.